Welcome back to PlayStation Corner, my name is Alex and today we're going to be taking a look at Kena Bridge of Spirits on the PlayStation 5. This is the first game from Ember Labs, it's shown a ton of potential leading up to release, but can its gameplay match the stunning visual style they've gone for? Well hit subscribe, join our growing PlayStation family and let's get started. Story-wise, you'll be taking on the role of Title Kena, a spirit guide. Her role help the spirits in this world move on to the afterlife. Some kind, most more than a little corrupt. The overarching goal, cure what is a corrupted forest and reach a sacred mountain shrine. Now while the story it is relatively simple in its concept, it's all the small stories we find along the way that make it so special. As you meet both good and corrupt spirits, you meet the rot that gave me kind of vibes of the subtle monsters from Spirited Away, and then you'll also witness memories that pad out the story of those around us, both the good and bad. Now Ember Labs, they started as an animation studio, but that is very clear with a fantastic pacing to its story, and it's constantly feeding you just a little bit more with each moment keeping you intrigued. So gameplay and it's a relatively simple action adventure with a heavy focus on combat and exploration. There's also the occasional simplistic puzzle along the way to progress. First though, the exploration on this, it was the highlight for me. This forest is just full of small pathways with secrets to uncover. It is, I will say, a relatively small open world to a certain extent, but it tends to stick to set routes and a more linear design, pushing you from narrative beat to beat. The movement here though is simple double jump, the ability to climb with similarities to the likes of Tomb Raider and Uncharted. You can swim and that's really all you're gonna need. This is then padded out with the puzzles as I mentioned and these are simple environmental pieces and it tends to be a spin on things like switches, uncovering secret paths and so on. It's nothing you haven't seen before but it just has a particularly good grasp of what makes exploration so fun. The main repeating theme though with exploration, clear out the corruption to so take down enemies and destroy the menacing looking overgrowth. Now aiding you in this is what's known as the rot monsters. These have a huge number of uses and with progression, they actually learn more and more from things like uncovering secrets to turning into a creature that can cause mass destruction to overtaking your enemies. This it's a great system and it makes the collectible system in game of uncovering these rot monsters essential as the more you get, the more they level up and the more they can do. Now I'm going to say it again, nothing but praise for the exploration and the world design here. The Rata Unique, Kena is a great acrobatic lead and then they even pack in collectibles in the form of hats for your Rata to wear. So yes, you can customise them which sounds and is ridiculous but it is in the best possible way. Also I will say look for meditation spots that's actually going to boost your health. So combat then makes up the rest of the experience and this, it is a little weaker honestly, starting with a simple staff in hand though, you'll have a light attack and a heavy attack that can be charged also to deal extra damage. They're both attached to the right triggers, you'll also then have the ability to dodge roll and also use a shield. The shield it can parry attacks if timed just right, but that takes some serious practice because it's not instant, it's actually attached to an animation that needs to play out for a split second first. With progression though, I'll put it out there now, you're gonna need to master these techniques because while the game, it has multiple difficulty options, on its normal difficulty, it's surprisingly challenging, demanding you not only understand your skill set, but you use it as well. As many of the enemy designs, they will play into recently learnt abilities and weapon types that you have found. An early example of bow and arrow, it was a go-to for me throughout, and many enemies just wouldn't be possible without it. Now one little hack I learnt quickly in some of the tougher boss moments though where you need to target let's say a very small glowing area was actually double jump in the air and then aim your bow. It actually slows down time making it just that little bit more manageable. The enemy design then it isn't the most varied but there was more than enough to keep you busy each challenging you in a different way and I was actually surprised at just how many sub boss and main boss moments the game contains and they really are hard as hell at points which I did not expect. I thought this was going to be a breeze and I found myself dying on multiple occasions multiple times trying to figure out the best approach while also working out where the health gem was because it is an auto regenerating you need your rat to interact with these plants around this world and those are going to be essential. 
While at the combat down for me though, it's fun initially, but it never really goes much further than what you get opening the game. It's very simplistic by design. I also found the lock on function a little temperamental, and by the end game, I will say the combat it was wearing thin. That's even when you throw in the fact you can actually level up Kana in a few minor areas for combat as well, she'll learn a few new abilities. Overall for gameplay though, it took a good 9 or so hours to get through this one, there's still collectibles left, there's other difficulties to try out, but I find myself now, with my love for the exploration, actually gravitating towards easy mode known as story. I want to enjoy the world and cover everything it has to offer, while the game actually kind of takes it a little bit easier on me, and I don't have that sense of, I want to avoid this next area because I may end up in a fight. It's not even that the combat is bad, it's just not as accomplished as the rest of the package. So visually it's stunning, plain and simple, the world, the forest location, it could have got boring very quickly, but they pump it full of unique sights, and it's constantly hiding something around the corner, from the corruption to incredible weather effects to caves to mountains that you can traverse. It's one of the best worlds I've seen in a game in a long time, and then it's all topped off with incredible character design and animation. This is Ember Lab's animation background just coming through, and it does definitely show. On the animation then as well, Kana and the characters, it's a very simple comparison here, but a Pixar comparison is not out of reach, they really are that good. Then the boss moments, that's the real highlight in the animation, they tower over you, they are almost grotesque at points and they know how to intimidate. Really, very few complaints from beginning to end, it's incredible stuff for how it looks. And do remember, this is an indie, it's not even priced at a AAA price point. So audio finally, and it's another winner, fully voice acted to an extremely high quality, and then it's reinforced with what I'd call a movie worthy score. It plays into the fantasy of this world with orchestral pieces that definitely sweep over the action. Exploration then matches the scene, whether you're freely exploring the greenery, you know, all is calm, to the moments corruption have taken over and things are definitely a bit more intense. Now occasionally, the only complaint I have, I noticed a few samples in the effects may be a little lower quality than others, but those were few and far between and for sure absolutely minor as complaints go. So overall, Kena Bridge of Spirits, it's a welcome release for the PlayStation 5. Still can't quite get my head around this is an indie less than AAA pricing because honestly would have paid 50 to 60 and not been disappointed or angry at all. It's just the world, the characters, the studio's background and animation that shines through, it makes it all so easy to like. You instantly care about these characters and you absolutely want to know what comes next. It is simplistic though in its gameplay honestly, that's fine though for me because it's just so polished. I want to go back now, I want to explore more, and while I had my issues with the combat, I still found fun in them, especially in those boss moments, that was an absolute highlight. A great 8 out of 10 from me and I can't wait to see what comes from Ember Labs next, whether that's a sequel to this one, or a new IP entirely. This may actually be one of the surprise hits for me of 2021. Will you be adding this one to the library then or are you holding onto that cash for PS5 owners? Great looking demo experience honestly that would be worthy of showing your family and friends. With that though, like hit subscribe, join our growing PlayStation family and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.